I have one of my favorite people with me, Mr. John Wright. John, thank you for coming on today. I appreciate it and thank, thank you for your service. Me. Thank you for inviting me. Most of you know about Mr. Wright, that he was perhaps one of the best educators in the county for years. He taught industrial arts with the legends Mulaski, Ickers, and Wright. And I still carry Mr. Wright. I, I showed you this before. Ben McNeil, who is now 40 years old, made this keychain for me, and I've had this on my keys no matter what car I've had, probably for 30 years, mm -hmm. at least 30 years, so I appreciate it. And, and then you became a vice principal, the legend continued, and then Bernie Sadusky uh, looked at you and I and said, I gotta keep these guys busy, and made you in charge of all the uh, custodians, am I correct, in the whole county? Correct. And you did a mm -hmm. great job with that. But I don't think most people know John, and they know you're an educator, they know you were vice principal, and they know you did a great job with the custodians, but most people probably don't know that you're a veteran. And so how, how about we start out, when did you go in, what years are we talking about? Well, back up a little bit, Fred. Okay, okay. You, you gave me such a beautiful introduction. <laughs> I, think, I think some of my ex-principals would like to say, who is that man? <laughs> Sue was, Stein is in Delaware, what's where, going on? <laughs> where, was he, okay. where was he when he was uh, teaching at my school? No, I, and I, I appreciate it, and that was a, a fun part of my um, my experience was uh, teaching teaching uh, middle school kids, and uh, I just enjoy it. They 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 would try to trick me every day. <laughs> <laughs> every day was a new. Every day was a new. Well, thing. the old industrial. Now you tell me, uh, the old industrial arts kids look forward to it. They used to make. They'd, they'd leave there after ever how, and they made whatever they made, and they look forward to that. But they they look forward. They they look forward to coming to to uh, the shop. Look forward to getting up and working on a, a project, keychains and birdhouses and wherever else we did. So it, it was just a uh, experience that they get them used to working with tools and and uh, basically following instructions and, and, and being safe. And you're giving them confidence, right? So they're not afraid of a screwdriver or a hammer or a Know what they are and be able, maybe maybe we could get out there and work with uh, dad on a car or something, knowing the uh, when dad says give me an adjustable wrench or get me this, they got it. And, uh, so anyway, that, that's my uh, uh, initial, but you asked about my uh, military experience, and uh, oh, so we'll delve into that. I, um, I joined the Army right out of uh, Kennard High School. Um, and remind everybody, just in case they're new to the community, what was Kennard High School? Why is that historically important? Well, it was, it was an African-American uh, school and uh, we, we grades from uh, 7 through 12 and uh, and that was a good experience uh, you know we, we had a lot of uh, uh, life experiences in that school from our teachers and uh, so it was, it was good it was good so up to 1966 now you correct me if I'm wrong up to 1966 there was Stevensville High, Centerville High, Sellersville High and Kennard correct correct and the, yeah, all, all the kids, all the kids from Ken Island, Pond Town, uh, Centerville, Churchill. They, you know, they all came together there. It was, it was. I'm not even sure what the population was. I, I guess around. I, I'm going to throw out the number 500. At, at uh, the Kennard High School. At Kennard High School, uh, and, and that might be stretching it a little bit, but uh, we were close knit. We were close knit bunch, and. Uh, the teachers tried to give us right lessons, the life lessons. And one of our favorite people we meet with most Mondays, Coach Charles Nesbitt. Charlie, Charlie Nesbitt Ch Ch has coffee with us, 93 years old, and bless his heart, he ran the phys ed program, right? You know, off, off the subject, and I yeah. tell this story a lot, but Mr. Nesbitt was the basketball coach, and um, I played on a team, and he, um, be coaching, but he, he got real frustrated with us one 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 game. We were in Chrisville, and he said that uh, if you guys make a mistake in the game, I'm going to take a paddle <laughs> and and whip you. <laughs> <laughs> and I said to the guys, I said, Mr. Nevis not whipping me. I will walk home first. <laughs> Half time we would go in, and he didn't. So it was just a normal game. But anyway, I remember that. 
I remember that about the coach. He was a good coach, a good person. A whole different era, right? A whole yeah, he, different he, era. He was just a good man, good so, man. So anyway, you graduate from, what year did you graduate from high school? Graduated from high school. I knew you were going to ask me that, Fred. Get close. Okay. 62. Oh, 62. That's all yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm 65, so we're we're knocking on the same door. Yeah, no, So 62. now, did you go f in June? I mean, did you go right in the Army? Did you take a break? I took, I took uh, a week break. A week? And went right into the uh, Army. Went to... Uh, uh, Fort Hollaberg, from Hollaberg, went to... Um, That's where I went in the Army, too, in Baltimore, yeah? Went to Baltimore, Fort Hollaberg. And from Hollaberg, we went to... Um, I went to South Carolina, Fort, Fort Jackson, South Carolina. It was, a staging, it was a staging place right there. Okay. And so uh, we, we stayed there for about a week. And from there, I went to Fort Gordon, Georgia. Oh, so you didn't? They moved you from one place to another. Oh, okay. Yeah, they 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 moved me there from. That's why I took my basic at uh, Fort Gordon. At Fort Gordon. I Georgia. had AIT at Gordon and Signal. Okay. Yeah. Now, any so this is the summer of '62, right? Am the I hot right? summer. I, oh, it I must remember. Have been hot. I remember the our marches, and I remember us going out to a bivouac, and we I we walking in lines about whatever it was, uh, maybe 80 guys, and we were in long lines. But I remember vividly, alongside the road, that was a rattlesnake. <laughs> he had been killed. You kidding me? He was being Wait, killed, oh, a man. diamondback rattlesnake. But <laughs> I swear, I guess I, I'm looking through young eyes. He, he was as big as the muscle mm. part of my arm. Mm. And, uh, and of course, as we got in bivouac and uh, as it, you were checking, right? And you were checking. The, well, you hear you hear somebody hollering in there, Snake. Oh, no. So everybody jumps out of their tent and take a look. I'm not. See. Everyone must have a snake story. I was yeah. in Korea, John. I, I, was, I was sitting like this. Me and a guy, I can remember to this day, kind of your story. Me and a guy named Jordan from Cleveland. It was late at night. You know, we had, we were supposed to be on guard duty, but you, you're bivouacking. And anyway, we're sitting there. We had a M14 across our lap, no ammunition. And we're just sitting there kind of leaning against the tree. All of a sudden, we were talking. I looked at Jordan. His eyes, I swear, went that big. And I said, mm -hmm. what's wrong with you, man? He said, don't say a word. This snake, and to this day, I don't know what type it was because it, you know, it was dark. You couldn't uh -huh. see. Went across his lap, got to my lap, wow. and just went like this. Woo and I said, oh, <laughs> Lord, and just kept on going. going. So this, there's a message there from above. I'm not sure what it is with snakes. Yeah. Now, how did you do how, qualifying and any other good uh, well, basic stories? Well, you know, I just remember when we got on the rifle range, I thought I was pretty good marksman. Yeah. But, you know, when you when you miss, you know what they hang up, don't you? They hang up a red flag called maggot drawers. Right, right. And uh, so I don't, I think I saw maggot drawers about, <laughs> if I shot a hundred times, I think I saw them about... <laughs> <laughs> seven yeah. times. So I had to do it. It was a do-over. I had to go and do it again. You bowled like, I bowled. They called it bowling in 66. They said you bowled. Yeah. Well, and the drill sergeant, you had your steel pot on, and he had a, he had that, and he wonked you. Nobody bolos in my unit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, I did bolo, maggot drawers, all that <laughs> put together. And uh, so what happens, you have to do it over again. Yes. So you have to get it, get in line, get in the long line and go out again. And, uh, I made it this time, okay, and so, okay. you know, I was a marksman. We got uh, our little medal we could put on our uniform. Got a little right? medal on our uniform saying that I was a marksman. So Fort everybody, Gordon. Everybody wanted to be a sharp shooter. Oh, yeah, shooter. yeah. I yeah. couldn't even see the targets. I had yeah. bad eyes. I, know, I, I saw the target. I, I, saw, I saw the whole thing. But um, like I said, I went back and uh, did it. John, I couldn't. Now, you tell me. I was shocked at the kick. I, I grew up in Montgomery County. I never... I was surprised. I was, M14s had a kick. Yeah, I, I didn't notice too much. I okay. mean, I used to hunt, and we'd shoot the shotgun, the 12 sure. gauge. So I was used to the the the, uh, the kick from the shotgun. So they, uh, uh, it was it was it wasn't, it wasn't didn't surprise you. that good that much of a, uh, a, a a shock to me. I handled pretty well. No, we did. Now, when I was in basic, did, did they teach you how to throw a grenade? I mean, did they do that at <laughs> Yeah, we, a, <laughs> grenade, a grenade story. Uh, yeah. We were out throwing a grenade, and uh, this, this one guy picked up his grenade, and it slipped out of his hand. Mm. And so, and everybody was told to duck. Right. And we ducked. I ducked. 
and there's a little rubber stopper in that grenade because it's just a, 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 a small powder charge in right, it. Right. Anyway, it was a, it was a train I got grenade. hit. I got hit with a. I got hit with <laughs> the, uh, the 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 little sponge, oh, oh, little Lord. ball, which said to me, if that thing had been live, you're dead. You're dead. I would have taken. I would have taken. I would have taken it for the boys. That must have been. Think how brave. I mean, I'm still shocked. I think of this in 1966. How brave those DIs. We were behind sandbags. I'm sure you were too. And it was yeah. pull the pin. Yeah. How brave those guys were just, and you know, well, I didn't know it was a dud, but how brave those guys just were being there. I don't care if it was a dud or a real well, one. I, I, didn't, I didn't, at that point, I didn't know it was a dud either. Yeah, right. I wasn't diving to get on the, <laughs> get out the out grenade. The way. I was diving for self preservation. There you go. And uh, I, you know, like I said, it hit me. So I said, if it had been it's live, done. It's done. John Wright, that would have been a letter going home to mom, dad. Here's your insurance policy and here's your flag, right? There yeah, you go. Know. How about uh, CPR training? Did you do the gas mask and a Quonset hut and all that nonsense? <laughs> I, did, I did the gas mask. Like everybody did the gas mask. They put, me, they put you in this little room and then they would pull the, uh, or the gas would already be in there. But then they would ask you questions. Okay. Your name, <laughs> rank, And you had to take your mask number. off, correct? Oh, Thank you. Yeah, okay. Take your mask off, and they would ask you those questions. <laughs> name, rank, serial number, and where are you from? I got to my name, my rank, and other than that, no. I couldn't do it. Your eyes, I do remember and they crying tried to, like a they baby. They tried to make me stand there so I could tell them where I was from. I, 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 all I could do was stammer. I can yeah. remember, like you, once we, they let us out the door, there must have been 20 or 30 guys. I, they were all just literally crying, some of them yeah, getting upset that's stomachs. Correct. That stuff that's correct. stung, right? Oh, well, yeah. I mean, you know, they're, they're, I, wouldn't wanna, I wouldn't really want to have to do that <laughs> no. now. I mean, they Could made, you me, they made me do it then, so. <laughs> now, it wasn't a great experience. So, so after work. basic at Gordon, where did you go for AIT or advanced individual training? I went to uh, Fort Monmouth, New Jersey, the signal school. Signal school. Oh, you went Fort back Monmouth. up north, okay. Yeah, it's right in uh, uh, Fort Monmouth, uh, right near Newark, Newark, New Jersey. Okay. And so I was there for uh, 12 weeks. I think I was what, there for 12 what you, weeks. What was your AIT? Electronics. I was oh. in electro electronics, and uh, uh, we, we, we took some courses that I <laughs> Boleyn algebra and mm. uh, basic electronics. It was a tough school. That was a tough school because you knew they always held it over your head. If you fail out of this school, I'm sending you to an advanced effort to train. 11 Bravo, good luck. So, and the sixth week, seventh week, seventh week was a hard, was a hard course. Right. And I got called into the office. Mm -hmm. And the uh, the sergeant said, "You got 69." Uh oh, you're below the passing point. You'll be you'll be low. So they said, "I'm gonna give you one more week, and if you get don't bring your grade up, AIT." You're going 11 Bravo Advanced Infantry. I have a feeling that grade went up, didn't it? The grade right? went up. <laughs> the courses were a little easier for me, but anyway, I I passed that course. That 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 Fort Monmouth was. Uh, was good training, you know. Now, yeah. on the weekends, would you get passes and get into the city or Newark or New I York? Or? I didn't go in the city. I, I wanted to go, you know, my, my I wanted to go home. Um, you you got to, I guess you got to love the city at that point. Yeah. I didn't love the city. So I, I uh, my free time, I, I most of the time went, went came back to Center. Came back to, okay. Queen Anne's County, yeah. Take a bus back then. Take a bus and my friend, my, my neighbor would, Sometimes bring me back up to uh, the post. Okay. And so, so you uh, got to see the family on the weekends. Got to see the family on the weekends. Oh, good. Yeah. Now I got to ask John. I ask everybody this. My first paycheck as a private E one was ninety eight dollars a month. Do you That's remember what? My, I mean, we were in the board at the same time, Fred. Okay. So mine okay. was about ninety eight bucks. So we're making twelve hundred dollars a year. Uh -huh. And that went on shoe polish, brasso, and all the stuff we needed for our Foot Locker, right? It was crazy. Not a lot going to the bank. No, save, no, there didn't, wasn't much didn't save, didn't save a lot. Now, okay, so you get out of, uh, no, you said electronics. What, tell me, what, I mean, you, were, you could work on anything electronic? Or? Well, basically, they would get us ready to work on the, uh, the radars. Oh, radars. Okay, yeah, radars. So we, we, uh, that was the kind of um, 
train that we did. Well, it was basic electronics. You, you learn basic electronics. From basic electronics, you, we, you know, we were able to fix those uh, uh, radar systems. Okay. Uh, so, actually, the, the television, CRT uh, screens, we knew how to, to work on that, and we knew how to um, fix, the, fix the components that kept the, the radar sending out signals and receiving okay. signals of uh, enemy or fo enemy and friend, friend and foe. I remember friend oh, and foe. Okay, well, that was a different in signal. that day with all the Nike missiles and everything, we had by the Bay, I mean, radar was terribly important. That's what the well, I was in part of it. I was in Korea, so we were, we were facing the DMZ. Oh, you, uh, yeah. so we, we leave Jersey. Now, did you get any leave time? You get, they sent you right to Korea. I'm sure I had a little bit of time for it. I don't, okay. uh, from, from there I went to uh, Korea, so and basically, I went to uh, San Francisco. We left out of San Francisco. So um, from San Francisco, we hopped on a plane and and went to, first of all, we there was a layover in Japan. Okay. And from Japan, we came to Korea, and which was kind of a, an eye-opening experience because you go into this village and Sights and sounds and smells. It's a different world at that time, wasn't it? Different, 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 different. Uh, now we're different in world. Korea, in North, I mean, DMZ or down. We Osana? we we were we were down near. Um, you might know more than I do about that. Pusan. Yeah, yeah, down south, down south. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we we uh, we came in. We came in though through um, what's that port in in Korea? We came in oh, through Seoul. We came in through oh, Seoul. Through Seoul. Okay. Mm -hmm. And from Seoul. Um, we got we got sent to uh, Fort Howard. That's where that's where I was. Uh, now was that second? What was what was Fort Howard? I was Tong Du Shan, Seventh Infantry Division. We were about fourteen miles from the DMZ. So you we weren't we weren't that close. We, okay. we weren't that close. We were we were down. Uh, Fred, are you going to ask me some things? Yeah, don't that worry. I, no, I'm just telling you. You're going to ask me some things I don't remember exactly. But we weren't we weren't that close to. Uh, uh, we're closer to Seoul. When okay. I say Seoul, we're a couple of hours from Seoul. All right. Okay, that's a better. Now, yeah. I, John, I, I spent my 13 months in Korea, and then I extended for six months. I like Korea. How about yourself? Um, so sounds. I mean, you know, we're a young man at 18, 19, you learn to make adjustments. Certainly. Um, it was it was it was okay. Okay. Well, I just liked it. Did you have? Uh, was it called MPC Military Pay Certificate? We didn't. We weren't allowed to carry money. We used to have like little co coupons. We had, we had that. Uh, what we called that funny money. The, yes, kind funny. of the big bills. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you know. And at that time, the American dollar was strong. And strong. Yeah. I can remember. Uh, one time, I went from Tong to Shan to Seoul with a hundred dollars. It was like a thousand dollars. I mean, I could buy anything I wanted. Yeah. One thing I did like about a uh, career was that. Uh, they, they made your clothes. You, you could oh. get, you, you know, I had a, a camel hair coat made, a, a suit made, and they, somebody came to the barracks and they measured you, you and got, got, your, got your measurements and about two weeks they came back and it wasn't a big, it wasn't a big charge. Well, we talked about this in a coffee group. I used to get a uh, gentleman's quarterly magazine and I, and I saw a suit mm. or uh, I mm. still have a cat. To this day, I still have a cashmere jacket, and exactly like you said, all of a sudden a guy shows up, measurements, and it seemed like it was nothing, 25 or 30 days. This coat has lasted from 1967, 68 to now. I mean, it was, it's a, and they could copy any suit. I, I don't know how you felt, but you know, it's like. Yeah, I, I, I remember, I remember. And the, the other thing that I'm gonna remember about, uh, fondly, about Korea is that um, we had a houseboy. Okay, let's, and, let's tell the world about the houseboy. Well, we, he, the houseboy took care of, if, if it were 20 of us in the, in the barracks, we had, let's say, three houseboys. Mm -hmm. And they would take care of, uh, you know, four or five of us. And So anyway, when I was in Korea, I was I was sharp. Shoes polished. Oh, and they did it all. The houseboys did it all. It was, what was it, $20 a month or something? Something like ridiculous. $20 a month. And, you know, my, my uh, uniforms were clean and pressed. Starched and, and everything. Starched right? and so... You know, when I got back in the States, it was a little different. But, uh, <laughs> we had, well, I can remember my houseboys, uh, they would make the bed in the morning. Yeah. Uh, 
the Foot Locker, which you know you had to set up. You remember you had to have the, the brush and the brass yeah. and everything. Yeah. They had that immaculate. Yeah. And uh, inspections were every Saturday morning. The house boys did it all. Did and it all. then they had a business on the side. They, they had a business on the side where they'd lend you money. But it was, the interest rate was 50%. Now, I'm making $100 a month, borrowing 50 So when I got my paycheck, I basically gave it to the house yeah, boy who's back, going, yeah. not a bad deal, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't have, my house boy didn't loan money. Oh, okay. So You had one of the good ones, right? right. <laughs> well, I, I didn't, I didn't. I, I didn't freak in the village as much as some guys okay. did. So. Well, I did, it was funny. Uh, we had movies. We had basketball court. Right where I was 127 yeah. Signal, we had a basketball court. And yeah. On weekends, believe it or not, I just got in a bunch. I wasn't a good basketball player, but I loved playing it. Uh, I got in with a, a bunch of kids uh, from Chicago, uh, L.A., their whole lives were basketball. Mm. And the weekends, we'd have like these little GI tournaments. And mm. they were fun. And, you know, you'd sit there. And they'd hide a beer or two in the bush. And don't let the first sergeant or anybody see it. And that's how we spent our weekends. And it, it was a very healthy experience. Yeah. And uh, I just remember uh, you were too tired to go in the village. And I'd have the village had pluses and minuses. We won't go into all that excitement. But on a, I was, I made, when I made E4, I was probably making, what, 150 a month, maybe 200 a month. It didn't. The sergeants and, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we didn't, we didn't. That up to E4, you know, it, it was minimal. Well, yeah. they, they paid you a little salary. So, uh, uh, and I, I thought maybe that I was going to, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit, okay. but I thought maybe I was going to uh, re-enlist, you know, when it came time for me Oh, you me thought to, about staying in? Yeah, oh yeah, I thought about, I thought about staying into the, uh, in the service. And uh, because I, I was, I was ended up, I'm, I'm jumping, but I was, I ended up in the, uh, Fort Bliss, Texas. Oh, so when you uh, came back to USA, you went to Fort. Oh, okay. I went to Fort Bliss because there they had all the uh, radar systems, okay. and uh, so while they they functioned, we didn't. I didn't have to uh, perform a lot of maintenance on. We basically uh, went in to make sure they were still functioning. The radar was still turning, okay. and you know, picking up signals. So you, you know, you could see airplanes going across, and okay. you could follow that. So. That was daily, like a half day. We had to get in the, the deuce and a quarter, the truck, big truck, deuce and a half, yes, yeah. and and go out and uh, go out, go out there, and like I said, make sure they're functioning. Make sure the stuff is functioning, and I, that's all I remember out there was you know going into the uh, looking at these uh, the scopes. And making sure the radars were turning and everything's working, and everything is working, and you could see the airplanes going across. And this would be friendly airplanes, but we want you just you want to watch to, to make I, sure they were functioning. I remember one time to, I only visited a radar site once. Do you remember SOIs? They were like a little document that had all the secret codes and everything. It did kind of anyway. I had a job uh, that I had to. Uh, first sergeant came to me, Mac. You're going to deliver the SOIs to this site. We drove in a Jeep, and the radar site was, I mean, it was up a, a mm -hmm. mountain, as far as I'm mm -hmm. concerned. And we had to live, and all I saw was this thing frantically going back right. and forth. Right. And that was geared to watch North Korea. Mm -hmm. and I'm sure they're still there. But uh, that was quite an adventure. Cause yeah. it, and that was the backbone of our defensive line. Cause it, oh, it was, yeah. But I didn't, I didn't have to do, I didn't have to work on the radar. I worked okay. on the scopes. The actual scopes. To make sure that the feed from the radar fed into the scope. We could see what the radar what the radar was seeing out there, so we had to make sure that that was that was working well. And you know, you had specific jobs in the uh, in that was fixing fixing the scope. I was responsible for the mechanism, the resistors, not to get too technical and all that stuff. But you had a specific, we're, we're working. specific I had, I had to make sure those components were. Okay. We're working. If something was down, I had to troubleshoot to find out what was uh, what had blown out. Okay. Then repair it and take you know solder it back in. Um, was an important job. Well, yeah, was, yeah. We we were, we were put on the uh, if, if those if those scopes weren't working, we had some uh, officers in there that was <laughs> you know. got chewing your butt out. Yeah. Well, John, you know what always amazed me and amazes people. Now, Vietnam is different, but in Korea. 
I basically worked like a nine to five job. Correct. And I, now, same thing when you were in Korea? Yeah. How about when you came back stateside? Well, when, when, I, when I was in Korea, yeah. uh, you know, the base, you, you were correct a few statements back when the, the uh, radar system was up on a mountain. When I was in Korea, we, the base was down low right. in the valley, you want to call it. And we had to go up on the mountain where, where the, uh, I just, I just, I just remember my first time learning to drive. <laughs> <laughs> we had we had to go up on a mountain and and it was a manual manual mm. transmission mm. and I I can remember they had a gate to go through and I had about eight or nine people on this truck watching you so, oh. well the lives in my hand because oh. because yeah. the uh, when you when you get up on the hill you had to stop yes because the guy at the gate. Sometimes he was on duty and sometimes so you you'd be blowing your horn oh, lifting the glitch uh, in to try to let you in and sometimes he did and sometimes I had to just learn how to ride the clutch <laughs> <laughs> keep the, keep the, keep the truck on the, you know on the incline and uh, then go in there so that that was and that was an experience that was that was very interesting for me because I had I, I hadn't been driving very long John I had the, one of my duties from Camp Casey was a drive from Casey 14 miles up to the DMZ mm -hmm. where the 2nd Division was. Mm -hmm. We had a deuce and a half, two right. and a half, but we had what they called a slush box. It was almost automatic. Mm -hmm. Once you put it, anyway, we would race. Again, this guy Jordan, who became one of my good friends, we'd race from Casey. We used to go through something called the Chinese Tunnel that the Chinese had built. But we'd be going through villages, drive, and just hot rides. Because, yeah. John, you, the DMZ in the 60s, I mean, it wasn't a war beat, but it was still a scary place. I mean, I mean. Well, you were you were up near you were up near the front lines. Yeah. I, I was I was far enough from it that you know we that wasn't our concern. We had guards, you know, had, yeah. had the, the MPs walking the post and the like. We had guard duty once we got up on the hill. Uh, nobody's coming up on it. If somebody came up on the hill, we were in trouble. Yeah, you knew yeah. Because we knew that you know they were trying to uh, invade, but. So, but we had to walk. We had to walk guard duty up there. Yeah, because it was uh, still a scary. In the '60s, it was still a scary. Did you get into Seoul much at all? Were you able to get into Seoul? In the Seoul? Yeah, the Seoul. only about twice. Beautiful. I mean, even in the, yeah. when I was there, '67, '68, huge, yeah, beautiful it, city. It, it, it was twice. I mean, you go there with with friends, and you you feel comfortable. Yes. Go there by yourself, and yeah. I, I remember an experience when I got to. Uh, when we, when we had a stop over in Japan, and we had passes to go into the village, going to Japan, I just remember getting on the bus, and there were about three other guy, four other guys that I was going to hook up with. Well, for some kind of way, I got hung up on the bus, uh -oh. and when I got off the bus, those guys are gone. <laughs> now, when I'm getting off the bus, I'm looking around. See nobody that's familiar. No, you really, didn't know. Didn't know what people were talking about. I was frightened. I got back on the bus. Went, went back. back on. Went back on post. It's funny. My favorite story from Korea is exactly like you said. I do you remember the Katusas, Korean Army attack. Anyway, yeah, yeah. okay. They, a guy named C. K. Park. I remember this day. He took me to downtown Seoul. First time in my life. I was the only Westerner yeah. I saw for yeah. hours. And I, I wasn't afraid I was more of, it was a good lesson in life. Hey, it's not about you, right? It's not about Bethesda, Maryland, or the United States. There's a big world out there with a lot of people, <laughs> and you got to understand them, and you got to be tolerant. Uh, but it was real good. Now, were you discharged from when you, when you were in Texas? Or? Well, I was discharged in Texas. Okay, so that was, that's where you ended But you, you did a lot of deep thinking. I, that, that kind of stuff never came to my mind. I was just afraid for No one's ever somebody. accused me of being a deep thinker. My <laughs> wife is laughing. I, I, I'd be afraid for somebody trying to take advantage of here. You got an American GI who's okay. out of place. Does it have any money? Yeah, but yeah. Looking at me, they would probably say no. But anyway, I, I, anyway, I just... Turned you tail, did. got back on the bus. I, don't think, I, I was lucky. This Katusa, a uh, Korean soldier, mm -hmm. uh, he took me to the Bondi Arcade and went Christmas shopping. Okay. And for my family, for $100, I was like the greatest Santa Claus. Because ah, you could buy, yeah. in those days, the American dollar was so strong. But I think we both had good experiences in Korea. No, I, 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 wouldn't, I, I would not change that experience for anything. I, I enjoyed my time in the military. I had, had things been a little different, I probably would have been 
ended up my career, but I'm glad I didn't because if I you had, were great if I, if, well, if I had, would I have met my wife? No, yeah. no. The wonderful children. Would I had? Would I had two great uh, daughters? No. 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 And you, you. I mean, I laugh, and we're going to close on this note because the time's almost up. You, George Ickes, Bill Malasky, who we've tragically lost, and yourself were right. in this county for at least 20 years with legends, because everyone would talk about, what was, what's your favorite class at Stevensville? Mr. Malowski, what's your favorite class at the Centerville? Mr. Wright's class. And the Southernsville people would say, I'm not gonna say it, but it's Ickes, my man Ickes, right? <laughs> well, you know, I, 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 I appreciate that. I know you got a class. I appreciate, I appreciate what, you, what you said, uh, but I do, I do see uh, a lot of my ex-students on, uh, to, to, you the know, other day in Dunkin' Donuts, a young lady, we were, I'm yeah. there, we were 10 veterans. Yeah. And, and, and they young remember lady me. hugged you and said, Mr. Wright, you were my favorite teacher. And they she's got to be 50 years finally. old, right? Yeah, I mean, at that point, uh, my what I felt, I just need to give the kids an experience in uh, working with hand tools. And and so that's what I did. So it wasn't, it wasn't, lessons, it wasn't. John, you mean modest. You taught them lessons in life and how to be uh, polite and how to work as a team. But look, John, let me stop now. First of all, did not the 30 minutes go by quickly? Went by pretty fast. And man. I want everyone to know now I owe them a hot chocolate and a Boston cream donut. Right now. <laughs> Every man has his price. Okay. John, first of all, thank you for serving not in the problem. military. Thank you for the wonderful educator. And thank you for a keychain that I've had 40 years now almost, or at least well, 30 years, uh, okay? Uh, pre, uh, you know, I, I remember both your kids, well, your three kids. Three kids. Uh, finally, uh, I, I think I had most fun with your daughter. Bridget, Because yeah. she, was, she was a little bit more mouthy. Well, and, she learned from and, now. And, she's a vice principal at Eastern yeah, so you taught I, her, you taught her well. I, I enjoyed, I enjoyed Bridget. I, but, you know, I pick on Bridget, but I enjoy a lot of my students. So, you know, I don't want to say that I enjoy Bridget more and than And they all I enjoyed you, John. I don't think they all enjoyed me, but a number of them did. I, so I, I'll, I'll, overwhelming. I'll take that. Well, again, yeah. thank you. And thank everybody for watching QAC TV7. My name's Fred McNeil. We've had Mr. John Wright with us. And we'd like to thank you for watching. Thank you for serving. We interview Queen Anne's County veterans. And I'd also like to thank our friends at QAC TV7 for putting this show on. The Queen Anne's County uh, Historical Society, who's involved in a veterans history project. And Compass Hospice, who certainly helps veterans. My name's Fred McNeil. Thank you again. My time's up. Thank you for your time. We'll see you next time. And thank you all you veterans for serving. Mm -hmm.